But recent events may give us reason to doubt that constitutional design can present a real restraint on political leaders determined to rack up more spending and more public debt. Europe's constitutional design appears to prohibit bailouts of the member states and to prevent the central bank from purchasing sovereign debt. But when the political elite claims that bailouts and central bank interventions are all that stand between Europe and the abyss, those restrictions were quickly disregarded. Similarly here, many state constitutional provisions requiring balanced budgets have been easily evaded, partly by clever devices and partly by, well, ignoring them. You know, who would know that California's constitution uh, requires a balanced budget? <laughs> the Budget Control Act places a legal requirement on Congress to pass an annual budget well in advance of the new fiscal year and to conform actual appropriations to the budget. In my day at OMB, this obligation was held sacrosanct and faithfully obeyed. Not so anymore. Madison warned that constitutional limits on governmental abuse would be mere parchment barriers if not reflected in the deep structure of accountable representation and separation of powers. Anti-federalists were even more pessimistic, saying that the only real restraint comes from an active and engaged citizenry and claim that this was the very thing that Madison's Constitution sought to neutralize, thinking that the populace would generally favor short-sighted policies like spend now and pay later. For a few important months in 2010, an active and engaged citizenry were in the streets and at town halls demanding an end to the abuse. Spend less, tax less, Borrow less, they said. Since that time, our government in Washington has spent more and borrowed more, and conventional wisdom says it should tax more as well. We've pretty much given up on constitutional design as a restraint. The general welfare limitations on federal spending are completely ignored, and the Supreme Court did not even mention them in its Obamacare decision. Will an active and engaged citizenry reemerge, and will they be heard? In the end, American citizens are the only protection that really counts. Thank you.